What's up everyone, Cannibal's Table Soccer here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Darlington Football Club Restoration Episode 3. Thank you so much for all the comments we had on Episode 2 in relation to which kit we should pick. Now, as soon as I saw that kit again with the Lance Robson picture, um, who actually, pretty sad story, died at the age of 47. Um, no age really, so... You know, in a way, to honour him and that kit, it was kind of awesome that you guys voted so heavily in favour of the Thin 3 Striper. Now, I'm recording this intro after I've painted it, so I already know it's awesome. Okay, so it's going to look good. I'm so happy you guys picked it. As I said, as soon as I saw that shirt again and that original image that I kind of... I wouldn't really say I've forgotten it, but I couldn't really remember it. It was an old picture I'd seen when I was, oh, I'm trying to think when I did this. It was before Sabutio, um, like blank teams were available. There was no Santiago Table Soccer. There was no Topspin. There was no Zuego even back then. Um, this was just before Zuego came in. Zuego was the first company I can remember that were producing blanks for paint your own stuff or you paints. Um, now there's loads of companies doing it. And obviously I use Santiago here. But back then what you had to do was get yourself a Leeds. Get yourself a Ref 21. It's already blank. It's a perfect blank canvas. Obviously, I did that. I based this off of um, a picture I'd seen, um, and I didn't do the exact kit that I'd seen, obviously. Um, but this time around, as we said, we wanted to stay true to what I did before, but you guys are right. By bringing in that history, that proper shirt, by using those thin three bands, we're taking it back to the club. We're taking it back to the history and the heritage is what I'm all about. I love doing that stuff to create something that is both unique, it's Westwood Table Soccer, it's Subutio, but it's also what it's supposed to be, and it's supposed to be Darlington Football Club. So, without any more talking from me in this intro, guys, enjoy the video. It's a good one. As I said, I've, I've seen the kit, I've painted it already. It's gonna be a good one. Enjoy the journey. If you do like the video, please smash that like button. If you are new to the channel, click subscribe. Um, leave some comments on the video. I love getting your guys' feedback on you know what you think of the series, what you think of the channel. So please put some comments down below. But yeah, let's roll this video on adding those three stripes. All right, everyone. So we decided in the end of the last episode um, to put it out to you guys what you guys want to pick. And as we just mentioned before in the intro, you guys picked the thin bands. Now at the end of the last episode, this will be left our guys here with their black and white hoop socks. These look amazing. I'm really, really pleased with how these came out. Um, I cannot wait to put these thin bands on. Now, personally, when I saw that original kit again, I kind of thought, yeah, the thin bands is actually the best way to go. And the clean and Christmas of that shirt, all white, which is why we decided to remove that red color we we're gonna put on and not put those black cuffs on. We're leaving that shirt fresh and white just with those bands on. The other thing we're not gonna do, and um, we're not even gonna attempt to put a badge on this kit. One, first reason, the original kit didn't have one. Okay, so don't need it. Original kit didn't have one. That doesn't always stop me. The other thing that's stopping me is this. These bands are quite high on the chest, okay? And there's three of them. There's a lot of paint in a really, really small area. Putting a badge on that can sometimes be quite messy. Um, and quite difficult to do. Number three, Darlington's badge is a coat of armsy style badge. It's very, very complex in trying to build it up. I have done it in frames and things before, so it is doable. However, I wouldn't do it on this shirt because this area is already quite busy. If I make a mistake, I've got to repaint the whole lot, which means I've got to clean that whole figure off and start all over again. So one, it just adds issues that I don't need to add. Um, and if I do have to clean those figures off, I run the risk then that the paints that are now on there might dry in a different way. They might not look the same. It's all about trying to get these guys all to the same stage. It's why I try and do every stage in one session rather than doing a little bit and then coming back another day and doing a little bit and come back and do another little bit. It's all about trying to get those colors to all be exactly the same, put on at the same time, and then they'll dry at the same time in the same way. So here they all are then, um, you get a bit of a better view of the socks we did in the last one and where we are at the moment. Now, these stripes that we're going to be doing, let's use this guy as an example, are going quite high on the chest. They're going to be around here. And this is what I'm saying about not putting the bad ones. We're going to be in here. Now, these thin hoops actually sometimes are easier than doing um, 
the thicker ones because what can happen when you're doing bigger bands, try not to get my hand in the way, but it's really difficult. Um, when you're doing bigger bands, as you've seen in my other videos, we have to put a frame line in, a frame line in, and fill. So for one band on this shirt would be three um, strokes potentially of paint for one. So it'd be like one, two, so you've got nine. Three, six, yeah, so you'd be doing nine passes for three stripes. Because these are so thin, there's no framing to be done, but it does mean that you have to be pretty accurate with that first stroke going across. You want it to be straight, you want it to be crisp, you want it to be clean. Um, so essentially, it's like doing a frame line, but this frame line is the band. Um, so what we're going to be doing, start with our top one, we're going to be working from top to bottom with our hoops because we need to make sure we get that first one in place to leave that nice balance up here. And then all we need to do, once we've got the first one in, leave an equal gap, put one in, equal gap, put one in, and then we'll have our bands going down here. Now, the best way to do this, and I would recommend it for anyone, is make sure your paint is at the correct viscosity. Oh. What's he done there? Westwood Table Stock has used another big word. Viscosity, really, really important, especially when painting little details like this. If your paint is too thick, um, what you can end up with is as you're painting across, so again, we'll use this guy, try and keep my hands out of the way. As you're painting across, if your paint's too thick, what you'll find is you'll get to about halfway and you'll start to run out of paint or it will start to catch um, and it won't work quite as well as you want it to. My neighbors just doing some stuff with a ladder, don't worry, nothing's gone wrong. Um, you, what you want to be able to do is do that straight line all in one go without stopping and the paint flow nicely. If the paint's too thin, especially with black, what you'll end up with like a, is like a grey. It's not a massive issue because if you're good, then you will just be able to go over that exact same line of another layer of black and it will blacken that line right up. Um, but yeah, if your paint's too thick, what can sometimes happen is if you're painting across, doing your painting, even if you're doing big areas, what you can find is sometimes it will catch because it's quite thick and gloopy. You end up, it just ends up with a mess and you end up with really thick layers in places. And then when it dries, what you'll end up with is an uneven coverage and you don't want that. So viscosity with a humble paint, humble black especially, the more you open it, the more you use it, it starts off really, really good. The more you use it, what happens is it tends to thicken up, goes a little bit like tar. Um, so I've just thinned mine out with a little bit of white spirit. Um, and yeah, that's enough talking for me. I've tried to explain a lot of things. Hopefully you guys are finding this stuff interesting and useful. Um, I try not to do too much of this sort of stuff talking wise because I want to try and keep my videos um, short and with a lot of stuff going on on camera and I, I'm aware I'm using the same shot here. But hopefully you guys understand. Last little point is you can see, as I said before, I'm a head holder. So we've got a little bit of skin there missing off this guy's nose. Um, this guy's got a little bit of issue as well. Not an issue for me. I can fill that in and touch that up with no problems at all. So, let's go on with it then. Okay, so here we've got our little fella then. And what I'm gonna try and do is um, do this one in front of the camera, um, paint each line, show you where we get up to, um, and then what we'll do is we will time lapse going through the other nine. So, um, as I said before, what I'll probably do is I'll speed up the bits where I'm actually painting because I can't talk when I'm doing these. Um, to do these sort of lines, you have to go full sniper mode. So um, I won't be talking. So what I'll be doing is when I'm painting, it'll be sped up and then I will bring our little man back to this little area on the table and we will sort of talk to you and explain to you what we've done and show you how each bit's put together. So there we go then, that's our first line in. Um, in terms of choosing the height, we try and pick it so that we've got enough enough space up here um, because we want to kind of keep it in that sort of chest area. We don't want it going underneath the armpit at all because the actual shirt was a very, very high three band. Um, so that's where we put the first one. And what we're gonna do now is try and leave an equal space in between and put our second line in.
Cool, so there's our second line. Um, it can be quite tricky to do these. There's a lot of bumps and lumps on the shirt. Um, really important to get pressure on the brush right. You don't want to put too much on, else you'll end up with um, like rounded uh, bulges in your in your stripes um, or in your hoops. So we've got our first two in, and now all we need to do is just come down here and add our third, and uh, then add this guy um, into the box, and then do the others. This is what I mean by having the paint too thin. If you thin it out too far, you end up with a real gray um, paint. Now it's not a massive issue because I'm gonna be able, what I'm gonna do is just retrace this line and it will darken it right up. But that's what I mean um, when I was talking about having your paint too thin, it goes into a gray shade. And there he is then, the third line is in. Um, left it even in there, stopped it a little bit shorter over here so that you get an even across the side of the shirt. And now let's run a time lapse of finishing them off. So here they are then, all in the box, and I think you guys will agree with the statement I made in the intro. These guys look amazing. So pleased with how they've turned out. I'm so glad that you guys went with my gut instinct when I originally asked you guys to the comments of using those thin three stripes. Um, we haven't continued them around to the back because I don't believe they were clinging around to the back on the actual shirt. What we have done though, you'll notice there's one significant piece to this team missing. We have sorted out our goalkeeper. So, what we've done with him, I'm gonna reach over and grab him here, is, here he is, we have done him in a reverse of the home shirt. Remember, he already had the black shirt, the red shorts, and the green socks, and all we've done is tidied him right up. So we've repainted those green socks in as close to Subutio Green as we could get. Um, we tidied up them red shorts, we patched in a few bits of the black, most of that black is the original black that we had on him and what we've done is we've just added in those three thin white bands to be a reverse of the shirt itself. I think it's worked really nicely, um, it's definitely cleaned him up, it's definitely made him fit with the rest of the team. In terms of what we've got to do next in probably the last episode of this restoration is add those red shorts, add the hair and boots and then this thing. I'm so pleased with it already, I absolutely love it, I cannot wait to get those red shorts on, I cannot wait to get those hair and boots on and show you guys the finished product. That is the end of this week's video, guys. This episode is done, this episode is finished. As I said, it's probably gonna be the penultimate one, this one, and I reckon we're in the final stretch now. We've just gotta add them red shorts on, um, we've gotta add the hair and the boots on, and then I'm pretty confident this thing's done. So I'm so happy with this, how this turned out. Remember what it looked like at the start? We'll put up an image in a minute, um, just in, on the screen with me. Remember how it looked at the start? Real scrappy, real messy, hoops in the sleeve, hoops around the back, absolute mess. And this is where we are with it now. So I'm really, really pleased with how it's turning out at the moment. Those three stripe bands, guys, perfect 
choice. I love the choice there. As I said, that was my gut instinct, but I wanted to leave it up to you guys to decide what we were going to do with it. So if you enjoyed this video, guys, if you're enjoying this series, please smash that like button. Please get yourself subscribed on the button that is here. Now, we've got the rest of the series playlist on this side here. So if you've missed any episodes or you want to just catch up and go back and have a look, there's some hints and tips in there for you guys to enjoy your painting. Over here, we've got a little video suggestion for you guys. There is nothing else for me to say, guys, except thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all the comments, all you guys' support. Please keep coming back. Please keep subscribing. Until the next one, stay safe.